Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here this morning. We have a guest of a different kind. Uh, quite a number of you are preparing applications for the next FCT call. And there is a field in the applications, as there is a field now in all applications about communication and dissemination of your results. And we tend to focus a lot on the technical aspects of the, the proposal and uh, to neglect these that we consider less important aspects of the proposal. And often we fail in our proposals, not because of the technical parts, but because of these things that we do not consider as valuable. Communication is nowadays a most important aspect on the, the preparation of a project, a proposal, not only at national, but mainly at European level. And in many European projects, you have members of team that are not specialists on the, the technical aspects of the project, that are specialists on the communication, that are specialists on the, the life cycle analysis and other aspects that are relevant to a project nowadays. And uh, we have been involved on this great project together with uh, other universities in Austria and in Finland. But actually, who I invite today to, to speak with you is Veronica. Veronica is from Materially, and it's the company that is responsible for the communication on this project. So you see, there is a company, there is a partner that it will work only on the communication. And I found it so important that I thought it would be worth to have her here today and share her experience with us. So without any further, I will ask Veronica to tell us more about how to improve our communication of results and in our projects. Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Professor Joao Coutinho, for this introduction. Um, as you said, I'm Veronica from Materially. We are based in Milan, in Italy. And um, we are the communication manager of the Greta project. So uh, he asked us to have this short presentation. Well, I try to keep it short, um, where we explain or we give a short overview of what we are doing in um, the, this communication and dissemination actions in the project and um, trying to provide you uh, some tips and some insights how to um, ac uh, apply your your uh, communication um, actions to, to uh, your needs and uh, your research results. So uh, what we are going to talk to the um, first of all, uh, we will try to explain you what are the main terms that are used in this context, not only in EU funded projects, but in general, um, when we are talking about funded uh, research results, it's important to understand how to communicate them, how, what means dissemination and at a later stage, the exploitation of these results. Um, so we try also to explain very quickly how you could uh, spread, how you can spread your research results safely. We will provide you some suggestions for action, some tips and tricks and links. Um, we show you very quickly how we do it with uh, the Greater Project. And then a very short uh, overview on the social media. Uh, why you should use them, which channels, so where you should concentrate your actions, uh, what you should share, and for so, and on, um, very importantly, how to do it. So, um, before we start, I actually would ask uh, all the participants to be uh, to be active, to be social. Uh, so this time you have <laughs> the. Um, permission to actually be distracted by social media uh, as long as you do um, citing Greta project. So um, have a look on the web if you find uh, the LinkedIn channel. We have a Twitter, we have also a Facebook account and an Instagram account. So let's start and try to understand these three main 
uh, terminologies that are used in the context of um, uh, spreading results of, of EOF, not only, as I said, not only EOF funded projects, but mainly. So uh, the first um, term we are trying to understand a bit better is communication. Communication at the end is everything um, that aims at presenting and promote your work. So the, the, the aim of this action is to inform about your, your research results or what the your work you are doing and raising awareness. Um, we can say that there um, it's you talking to, a, to, to your audience. So it's you presenting uh, what you're doing. Um, this action happens actually from a very beginning of the project or, or a research activity or any kind of um, um, activities you are doing that you want to, to be brought to a broader audience. And it goes on uh, throughout all the complete period of, of the activity and also beyond. beyond. So also um, once the project or the activity is finished. How to do it? Um, on a website, if you have one, or if you decide to, to create one, or also in this case, if you have an institutional website or if it's linked to a project and there is the, the project's um, proprietary website, social media, um, events, public and also internal events, um, and then also um, evolving the press. Uh, on the other side, we have dissemination. Uh, where dissemination is focusing um, on the results of your activity. So once you do have something, uh, a result of your research activity that, that you can share, uh, and there it is important to be sure that you have the rights to share the, the outcomes and the results of your work, um, then uh, it starts to have the communication activity actually transform in dissemination actions. Um, in the sense that there you are sharing your knowledge that you gained uh, with, with your audience and this enables to have an exchange with your, um, with your ad, uh, audience. So in this sense, uh, some, of, uh, some kind of networking can start to be um, built on. Um, how to do it? Well, uh, as you will know all of you very well, um, scientific publication uh, is a good way to, to disseminate your results, uh, self-archiving on the very, on the different tools, channels that are available online mostly, um, participating in conferences, but also lecturing. So um, talking about uh, your results uh, to students or, or to peers is, is considered dissemination. Then at the very end, another uh, quite important term is exploitation. Um, exploitation me starts when once you have the results and these results are uh, used by others and are uh, can contribute to further development of uh, research or also um, commercial commercial exploitable uh, activity um, and in a more technical way. Um, um, once you have the possibility to patent uh, your uh, results, then this is a very strong exploitation uh, result. So, um, as we said before, uh, regarding um, before st starting dissemination and afterwards exploitation of your results, you have to know how to uh, to be sure that you can do it and also that um, um, you can, um, you're not violating any uh, rights, so that you have the, the uh, intellectual the property rights to do it. Um, I guess most of you have quite a clear idea what uh, um, what this research data and then how data is uh, managed and how it should be shared. So um, aspects regarding to open access uh, more, most probably you are more expert than us on this, but I wanted to have a short overview on this also um, in the case you want to share with um, others or you, for some reason, you don't have uh, the knowledge about this. So um, 
during in uh, European funded projects, you uh, um, very often you find the need to have a dissemination and exploitation plan and also a data management plan in order to set at the very beginning of the project um, to define the, the set and uh, define the rights and then the duties at the beginning of the project and to be sure that uh, throughout the project duration there are no um, controversy, controversies also within the consortium, within the partners. So, um, as you probably know, there uh, usually it will be defined the data management plan at the beginning of the project. And this uh, will also, uh, the, the, um, the commissions or the reviewers ask to revise the data management plan also throughout the project. Um, whenever data are um, added or modified and uh, um, this plan needs to be revised. Um, I go very quickly about this because I'm quite sure that you know <laughs> what the topics are. So uh, especially regarding open access, um, the European Commission is uh, highly uh, asking participants, uh, project participants and beneficiaries to use an open access for their research results and um, to share whenever possible uh, all the results um, with open access and, and uh, creative common license. Um, regarding intellectual property rights, also um, these aspects usually are defined at the beginning of a project. Um, so before sharing any research results, uh, be, create, be sure that um, you have the right to do it, that um, you are not using results that maybe are defined um, otherwise within the consortium. Um, check if there has been already um, a non-disclosure agreement or a, a consortium agreement that might limit um, some of your dissemination. So now gets, let's go more in deep in um, some suggestions to, um, to transform these concepts of communication, dissemination and uh, exploitation in some actions. Um, what you can do before starting to uh, disseminate your research um, or before even starting uh, on your research project. Um, it's a good idea to, to arrange funding for your dissemination. So to reason about that you, um, you, you need to participate in, uh, you should have funds to, be, um, to participate in conferences, um, or publishing papers, or um, maybe also travel to be able, well, not in this very moment, but uh, we, we are looking forward that there will be again the chance to um, participate in physical events to, to present your research results. Um, as I said before, be sure that you have the, the rights to, to disseminate your results. Um, it's good to, to, to start and to have may, uh, make some preliminary planning about um, how you could uh, include some communication and dissemination actions in, uh, in, in your activity. Um, it's good to foresee some regular act activities such as um, uh, if you have a personal blog to say, okay, um, every three months or once a month I'm going to talk about my research activities, to foresee um, participation in uh, presentations or uh, uh, submitting papers. And there you can link, the part once you have uh, the possibility to present the paper, um, you can link some communication actions. So uh, post about the event before it's uh, um, promoted be beforehand. And once you're participating, uh, post about the event, um, let your audience know that you are there in, in, the, in the conference. Um, define uh, also what is your audience, who you want to talk to. Um, if you, if you, my main audience might be um, your peers or other researchers, or if you are uh, trying to talk mainly to policymakers 
or if you're looking to find other funders for your future research. Um, so try to understand who is your audience and then also try to adapt the content that you are going to publish, uh, to present, to communicate um, based on um, the audience you want to talk to. And, and then uh, try also to understand which are the channels and the tools that you can and that you want to use. Um, because maybe not all of you are interested to use social, channel, uh, social media, so maybe a blog, a personal blog can be much more um, easy to use. Um, or uh, there are different ways to, uh, to communicate without. Whether you prefer maybe to have some in regular internal meetings and share uh, your, your progress and face-to-face uh, -face, um, encounters with your colleagues. Um, then once you are in your daily routine uh, working on your research um, and you have defined that you have done the previous steps and tried to, to reason about who is your audience and what kind of channels you want to use, um, a good thing to do is to create some dedicated mailing lists uh, for your different um, contacts that you have. So, um, as I said, if you if you prefer to talk to other uh, researchers, to colleagues, um, then have some separate mailing list and create mails uh, targeted based on, on who you're writing to. Um, obviously, you will send different information if you're um, writing to your peers or if you are, for instance, writing to journalists. Um, you for sure already are part of um, some social media groups um, with similar interests or uh, um, yeah, that are related to your research where, we, where you also will gain information probably from. Um, a good thing to do is, as I said before, um, to update regularly on your activities, on your posts. So try to um, fix maybe um, once a month or once every three months um, a date that you're, um, you put it in the agenda that there you will do some communication or dissemination activities. And um, for sure, uh, remember to, to inform your, your audience once you have a, a publication out, um, if you have been invited to a seminar and you're presenting, um, if you're reaching a milestone in your activity. Uh, these are all information that um, your, your followers or <laughs> your contacts are interested to know maybe also beforehand in order um, to, to join also the, the meeting or, or the, the conference. Um, after you research, or the, when let's say the, the main goals are achieved, um, um, there are some, several possibilities to exploit uh, your results, not also in let's say commercial way, but um, uh, yeah, try to, um, make the, the, the biggest um, um, gain of, of the work that you have done. So uh, whenever you have the possibility, um, try to publish maybe um, not uh, the whole, or, or there are maybe possibilities to extract some results and, and um, consider a different journey that you usually do because a part of your result could be interesting also for another um, be, uh, research community. Um, whenever possible, try to participate to talks or to the discussion tables and um, obviously present your work. And the important thing is, all, if you do these activities, is somehow to keep track of them, to document, uh, especially if you're part in an EU funded project then you're actually obliged to, to somehow report it um, in order to um, uh, prove that you have contributed to disseminate the, the project results. But uh, it's also a good way for you personally to keep track of uh, what you're doing and um, um, extend also your, your network of contacts and uh, um, um, and be, be 
keeping track of your, your activities. Um, as we were talking before about uh, the content and, and your, the audience, um, it's quite, uh, it's a good habit to um, maybe reason about who you're talking to and how you are going to present um, your results. Um, because for sure uh, your peers, uh, your researchers know perfectly um, how to interpret it and how to uh, read um, research results. But if you are talking to, let's say, more generalist uh, journalist or maybe to possible funders for your next um, research project, then maybe you need to adapt uh, the, the, the way you present the content um, in a different way, most probably in a more simpler way. Uh, so um, try to, to understand who, who, is, who you are going to talk to. So um, some slides with some links mainly, some, some tips. Um, when you have the chance, chance to do uh, to participate in a poster session with with your work, um, try to to share it. Not only um, have the poster shared by the, the organization organizers of the poster session, but um, ask your your institution, your university to to share it. Um, try to share it on your channels wherever possible. Um, if you have slides, uh, you have slides that you can share. Use uh, the the several channels that are available in, in the internet now to share your results. Um, if you have the chance to do a speech or to be par part of a round table, and there is the possibility to register your your contribution, then there you have also uh, the possibility to create your own. Um, um, podcast and uh, well for sure you know you know all the other um, channels and and online tools uh, to organize and to self archive your research data um, with the several uh, um, channels that are available for uh, for researchers um, especially specifically um, there are several channels also from uh, the European Commission to promote research results. Uh, in, in, in particular, there is uh, CORDIS and the uh, EU uh, research results platform uh, where um, they ask um, for most um, um, beneficiaries of European funding to promote their results. Some tips and uh, tools how to um, create content that you are going to use for your communication. There are several tools now available to create some very uh, simple uh, but graphically appealing um, presentations or posters um, which without having um, let's say experience in graphic design uh, you find some nice templates that are easy, accessible and easy, modifiable for your needs. Um, if you want to create a short video, for instance, if you have a lecture, um, or especially now that we are used to do online presentations and webinars, um, there are several tools to create, um, to register your presentation and then uh, create some short videos to share with, with uh, your audience or, or your contact. Um, there are also tools to understand uh, which are the, nice, the, the best journals where to publish for your, uh, your results. Um, some interesting, uh, or especially now that we are used to share a lot of links, um, if you ha want to upload uh, documents and what have a um, much more easy uh, uh, URL to share. Uh, there are tools to, to shorten this. And there are also um, several tools to um, uh, to track your, your online mention. So if how your research is actually uh, been disseminating throughout the web. 
as I mentioned before, uh, European Commission is highly, highly um, interested in uh, uh, con um, providing tools to your to their bef beneficiaries to communicate as much as possible and disseminate uh, as much as possible the project results. Um, the the European Commission and at the end, uh, we as as European taxpayers are are contributing to. Um, so. Therefore, we have some links with uh, there are some several very exhaustive uh, guidelines and available in the uh, online. OK, get let's go to more specific um, examples. Uh, actually, trying to explain now what we did in Grete um, to create a story and try to convey the, the, the content of, of the, the Grete project to the a broad audience because the the greater project itself is quite technical for let's say the um the the, the tax the taxpayers if i want to say like this so we started with um defining the five w's of uh, of our story so this is based uh, actually on uh, very traditional storytelling so we uh, try to find, define uh, where our story is taking place, when, so if the past and the future or now, um, who, are, who is involved in the story, who are the, the protagonists, um, why this story um, has been written, and uh, what's the, the final aim, the final goal of to, do, to be reached by the end of the story. Um, so we set the context, we introduce the context as you would do uh, in a general uh, while um, telling your story, you start by saying, okay, we are uh, uh, now in the midst of a pandemic, that's why we are doing all our events online, for instance. Um, then we defined who are our uh, main actors, our correct, uh, our um, protagonists of the story. So in this case, we have mainly the researchers involved in the um, in the um, in the activities to to ex to find new solutions for the problem that has been set by the context uh, and objectives that have been defined by the the creation of the create the project. And then we try to define the plot of the story. So what are we actually um, going to tell? And uh, um, interesting, the, the nice aspects in, in the greater project is we actually have three stories that are developing in parallel. So we have these three um, research streams that are uh, addressed within the project. Um, and together, um, these the activities of the, of the um, protagonists of these three stories uh, are contributing to to the um, development of the story and to achieve the the final results. Um, we reason about the timeline, um, which is uh, here too. It's like writing the story of your project. So introducing um, where we are, why we are doing what we are doing and who is involved. Um, then we have the main, uh, the, the, the great is a, is a project that's going to, um, uh, that lasts for four years and will be uh, ending in 2000, 2023. So uh, now we, we are in the full development of the story and uh, so we are going to um, address different aspects of, of the research activities. Um, while the past year, the, the last year um, and the final months of the project will be uh, specially dedicated to uh, conclude and to, trying to do, um, uh, tell the the final outcomes of the story, and somehow the um, the the moral, the final moral. 
Um, we do have uh, two videos that we cre we've created two videos. Uh, one that is related to the explaining the context and the scenario where the story is happening. And the second one is focusing on the aims and the goals of the project itself. Um, I'll ask you to, I'm go not going to show them there because it would, they are quite short, but it would take some time. So um, you find them on all the great social media. So go and have a look at it afterwards. Um, but it's uh, somehow an example how to um, convey the message in a short and um, address to, uh, to a non-specific public uh, audience. Starting. No, sorry. You will see it by your own. <laughs> okay, so this part, I guess, is the one that probably interests you uh, mostly. Um, how to use social media. Um, so why why you should use uh, social media? Well, actually, it's it's very uh, easy to access it nowadays. There are a lot of channels and a lot of possibilities to um, uh, to create your your account in very short time amount of time. Uh, for sure, it's very widely spread and. Uh, um, easy to use by all kind of audience, so uh, even policy makers or uh, funders or institutions, all of us, really all of us are on the web and, and are linked somehow to social media, so it's, it's maybe more um, the, an easier road to go than, than having your website or um, yeah, your institutional uh, premises, offices. And for most interesting um, aspect is that you have some uh, embedded tools that enable you to, for instance, to do some short videos, to um, uh, include some extra um, activities that otherwise you would need um, graphic editing uh, programs and, and also the, the, um, the skills to use them. While uh, with the tools that you have in the social media, it's uh, much more easier to, to create some interesting content. Where? This is the most uh, tricky question, I guess, because uh, as you have so much possibilities to use any kind of social media um, and it's quite time expensive to to use all of them which I would not recommend recommend um, it's it's useful as we said at the beginning to try to think about which are the channels you want to use based on the audience you want to address and but maybe also simply based on what you like most if you if you are not using Twitter um, and you prefer Instagram because there are a lot of, it's much more um, uh, visually focused on visual content, then it has, makes more sense to use the one you prefer uh, and try to focus them but, uh, on, on the audience that you can gather in this certain, uh, in this specific social media platform. Um, talking about Grete, uh, we decided somehow to have four channels, which are quite a lot, but the, um, the strategy behind um, this, this choice is that we want to get in contact with very different um, groups of, um, of audience. Uh, while we have a more, um, let's say, professional uh, or let's say more um, an audience linked to, to the being experts or professionals related to the research that is being done in Grete. Uh, we think that it's also quite important to have uh, Facebook and Instagram where we can go, get in touch with the civil society. Uh, so we'll see policy makers and um, um, uh, 
NGOs that are working uh, really in topics related on more sustainable solutions for the textile industry, for instance. And, and also, um, we think that the Instagram is a quite interesting tool where you can um, get in touch with the, much, with, with, the, with the young consumers that are uh, sensitive to aspects of, um, uh, to find alternatives to the current fashion system, to find more uh, sustainable solutions for fashion, and um, also to, um, to engage uh, young people uh, to, to, to research topics as um, research is, is that is research and development gives the possibility to look and find new solutions for um, old and let's say most probably not not working systems. Um, another important aspect to consider is what you are going to share uh, on social media and then especially how you are going to share. Uh, for sure if you are using Twitter the content that you are going to share needs to be different than if you use Instagram. As I said before, Instagram is mostly interested in uh, focusing on visual content. So there um, it's important that you have a nice picture and uh, um, uh, a good caption. Whereas in Twitter, uh, it might be sufficient to have the good caption <laughs> without a picture. So if, for instance, you could combine the two uh, saying, OK, I want to use Twitter and Instagram on the one I will share the the good caption as the text and on the other I will use the good caption combined with a nice picture of your activities of your maybe you if you have some nice um, products from the lab that you can uh, that you are allowed to share it's for sure some an instant instant interesting way to gain some um, for the young audience to gain some insight what our research is actually doing uh, a short, uh, some tips how to use social media. So um, here too, it's quite important that you try to be active and then try to promote your, or to um, talk about your activities regularly. Um, here also you have differences between the social media. Some, um, in some cases it's, important to be present at least once a day any other others maybe it's okay if you publish on, only once every week for instance um, LinkedIn is not that uh, pressuring <laughs> on this aspect as maybe um, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter um, Try to how whenever possible cite other profiles. So the the the, the ad symbol, which is called handle, um, is a possibility to cite other projects, other profiles, also personalities. Um, I mean individual accounts. Um, this is uh, in this way uh, you can start to be um, a network and. Um, to, um, it's also easier than to re um, track the activities that, that have been done with these profiles. And for sure, try to use as much as possible uh, the hashtags to, to be involved in uh, trending topics or to, um, uh, to be inserted in, in a topic discussion uh, related to, to your activity. And then, uh, whenever possible, interact, so respond to comments, but also use uh, most social media, have a direct uh, messaging um, uh, plugin where you can write messages directly to, to other users. Um, this also is a, uh, a possibility to uh, create some uh, networking working and could be uh, an alternative to your mailing list if you're not um, uh, interested to have uh, or to, to create your mailing list or to send out specific emails you can also use the direct messaging options 
uh, to use this as a kind of um, direct mailing activity. Um, so in Grete, uh, we decided that uh, we have the website as, as our main channel, um, where we publish regularly, once a month we publish an article, and then we extract the, the contents of, this, of the article um, to create content for the um, several channels, based, as I said before, uh, on the audience uh, that we are going to address in the, several, in the different channels. So we have the main content and that can be split and targeted to the different um, audience groups, stakeholder groups. So that's more or less all from my side. <laughs> uh, almost 40 minutes, <laughs> I guess it's enough. Um, before you, you, I leave you the space to, um, to have so, um, do some questions. Um, just a quick summary. Um, so before reasoning about uh, research activity, or if you have to write a project proposal, or if you have to um, somehow involve, involve funders uh, for your research project, uh, try to foresee at least some budget also for your research um, dissemination activities. Uh, as for sure you will have some costs, for instance, participating in events or publishing, or if you, um, although online you can find a lot of uh, tools that are for free, but maybe have some small budget um, also for us to do some specific um, uh, uh, promotion activities is always good to, to have planned beforehand. Um, do a short um, plan of what could be uh, your communication dissemination actions. As I said before, think about the channels you want to use, how much time and how much um, uh, how much regularly you can be active for communication dissemination, which are the conferences you are going to attend. <coughs> and um, um, and then, the very interesting, uh, very important aspect: uh, if you are working with fun with funding, so if your research project is is funded, then always remember to mention your funding and to to display in a correct manner uh, the logo or the um, the references you need to have um, in your uh, which we uh, is our we are funding your activities. Um, try to spread the contents across all the channels you have available. Uh, also asking for your institution to, to whenever possible to, to share. And, and as I mentioned before, um, try to document your activities, especially if it's, not, if it's activities that you are doing offline. Um, while online activities you may um, be able to, to track afterwards, if you do some meetings, if you do lectures, if you have one-to-one uh, -one encounters where you are promoting your research, especially if funded with, um, um, with external funding, then uh, remember to, to document that. So that's mostly all from my side. Um, please, if you have any questions, go on. Veronica, it was wonderful to listen from you about all these aspects of communication. Uh, let me start by the end. You said we should not forget when we submit projects to uh, contemplate the funding for the communication. Everybody keeps that on mind when it comes to conference, but um, it's not only conference that is communication. Nowadays, open access is a big thing uh, that we have also to leave money there for. And the data management plan uh, at the European level is already very important, and I guess that most people here have never heard about that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, 
do you know more about that so that you could in a couple of minutes explain to the students and what are the requirements at European level? Um, yes, as you said, uh, they usually they are required um, and actually there are already some templates available. Um, let's try if I'm able to go back to the slide. Um, uh, the, the main objective is that uh, the Commission, but not only, I mean the project management per se, uh, aims at having quite clear um, what is the, 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 the data that you are going to uh, produce and how you are, um, yeah, how you, you are going, especially since these are um, results achieved uh, thanks to funding, uh, the, the, the European Commission is very strongly uh, focusing on, or yeah, focusing on, on trying to exploit as much as possible research done with the, with the European funding. Uh, so um, they, they want the beneficiaries to be uh, aware of what kind of data they are going to, to produce and how this data can be exploited in, in a correct way. That means uh, without, um, mm, I mean, uh, it's important that you as, as the um, uh, creator of this data uh, and uh, that you have the ownership of the data. So um, the, the aim of the open access uh, policy is not to, um, uh, let's say, exploit um, without recognition of, of your work the, the results that you have achieved, but they want that the results gained uh, through, through the Flander project uh, are as much as possible accessible to, f for, for, um, to other researchers to further um, explore um, the, the possibilities and uh, be sure that what has been done in the past doesn't remain in a, in a closed uh, uh, drawer <laughs> and is not accessible to other researchers. So this is, they are also um, now also with the new program with the Horizon Europe, it's one of a very, it's an important pillar in, in the the, um, in the request from the European Commission. So that's why they, um, they are asking for all project proposals to include the data management plan. So um, uh, understanding uh, what kind of data you are going to produce, how we are going, you are going share, to share it. So if it will be made accessible to uh, online depositories, um, if you are going to um, have the chance to, to, to disseminate it as much as possible with Creative Commons license so that other researchers or uh, whoever has the possibility to use this data um, has access to the, to the data. Basically, um, we no longer have like in the old days. In the old days, we measure things, we write a paper, expose, and we forget about that. Mm. The new paradigm is you measure things, the raw data has to be kept, preserved, even after the end of the project. And I'm not talking about the tables of data that are in your papers. We are talking about the raw data that uh, gives origin to these tables. All spectra, all measurements in the lab had to be stored so that in the future, if someone wants to go through that data again, even if it's data that will never be published because, well, the results were not interested, they must be available. So this will change completely the way we do things, the way we organize the information that we measure, we collect, we store. Ultimately, the, the, the goal is to store all the information that we produce in the labs so that anywhere anyone anywhere in the world can have access to that information and reuse it if uh, they want it. Am I right? 
Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, also, I think, um, I mean, the, 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 especially the European Commission has funded so much um, research activities that then maybe there is also a lot of uh, um, research going on in, on parallel uh, in the past that had not been linked. Uh, so the, the, the very, uh, the goal of the commission, commission is, as you said, to, to um, be sure that all the work that has been done and is going to be do uh, done in, in the future, um, that really um, exploits the, the research as much as possible to find new solutions to do uh, and, and new applications and to be sure that um, the research that has been done in the past and that has been funded does not get lost. Yeah. And yes, I guess for, for you as a, I mean, I'm I'm not a scientist, so I don't know how, or especially not a researcher, so how did, did as I know, in the old days, <laughs> um, you, you um, especially uh, fees for publishing in, in the, let's say, the, the important journals were very high, so there was also this, um, and, and also accessing the, the, the articles uh, once they are publishing. Um, so this obviously is a barrier uh, in, in disseminating the, the results, and, and that's why um, they try somehow to, uh, I would say, not dismantle this, this um, system, but uh, yeah, to find solution to, to spread as much as possible uh, the work that has been done. So you're, we are really approaching a new world of making science and that it's what people will call open science that is more naked science because you want to see everything and just open. Uh, you mentioned another thing that I would like to stress. Many people use Wikipedia to quickly find information, but very few people think about producing material to the Wikipedia. From everybody that is attending this meeting today, I don't know if anyone has ever written something to Wikipedia, although everybody has been using it. That's a challenge that I would like also to leave here. And not necessarily in English. Sometimes you find information in English and there is nothing in Portuguese. Uh, it doesn't take much to translate the information and uh, add new information. You are experts in many things that are not in Wikipedia or that could be complemented. You could spend some time, not much time, just to write a few words, some paragraphs, a page to Wikipedia. And uh, my final question to Veronica. Veronica, you mentioned also Altmetric. Do you, mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about Altmetric? Because that's something also that this audience is not very familiar with. Uh, I have to be very honest. I don't know it very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually, I, um, I, I was very happy to prepare this slide because uh, it gave me also the opportunity to uh, collect information that I didn't have before. So it's actually also a way for, for me or for uh, our whole team to uh, expand our knowledge. So, um, yeah, collecting the, the, the guidelines and the information you can find uh, online and especially on the, um, the European Commission is uh, sharing a lot of uh, very useful um, uh, tools, but also there are uh, especially the um, regarding the also the, um, the intellectual property rights aspects. Uh, if you go to the European Help Desk, um, which are here, the links also um, on, on help desk on IP, uh, on intellectual property. Uh, there are, um, besides the, the, let's say, the, the guidelines and the resources that you can find, there is also some specific training. So um, we tried uh -huh. in this, in this sh short presentation to condense uh, the information that you can find uh, online. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I need to go deeper in, in the altrimatics no to problem. understand how it works. Um, but I, I wanted just to, to add um, one thing, as you said, yeah, the, 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 the ultimate goal, and I think also of the European Commission is to, to um, make 
uh, knowledge and, and uh, scientific data accessible as much as possible. Um, also, I mean, we have the possibility and uh, these, these last year showed us very clearly that uh, we are strongly interconnected globally. So it's, it's, um, I think it's fundamental that we also uh, be aware that we need to, um, uh, to work together in this sense. I mean, reasoning about borders in a situation like with, we had now with COVID, uh, it's not possible anymore. So we, I think that the, the open, um, open research approach, uh, but also has it already been used with uh, uh, information technology? So the open, um, now I'm not remembering the word, but <laughs> uh, the, the possibility to work on an open systems and uh, operational systems in IT, um, it's the only way to solve global issues as it is, for instance, the, the, the pandemic right now. So, um, yeah, I think uh, we need to, to work. And th this is also the spirit of the European projects, the funding ideas of the, uh, the European project and why they are so interested in um, having the beneficiaries uh, disseminating as much as possible the contents of their research and, and trying to do network with other uh, researchers or other projects in order to maximize the impact uh, of, the, of the activities of, of all of you, of what you're doing in your labs, the, not only the taxpayers that are contributing to do this, this research, all of us, we need to know what is, what is uh, produced in the labs in order to um, exploit as much as possible the results. Let's see if there are other people that have questions or curiosities. If you do, please raise your hand or just turn your camera on. Anna? Can can I ask a question? Yes, Anna. Um, first, thank you so much for the wonderful uh, and insightful uh, presentation. And we really need this. We have a call for projects now. Um, I'm sorry if this question was already asked. I had a, a cat emergency, so I had to run <laughs> out for, for some minutes. But regarding the data management plan, I have one question. So we should, of course, and I completely agree with this, everything should be transparent, we should keep our um, data available to everyone so that people are not doing exactly the same thing that we did before. But if we want to protect uh, our data and to do uh, international patent application, for example, what is your recommendation? Like, we in, in the data management plan, we should say that some data needs to be kept confidential until the patent is granted and that data goes uh, for a secure uh, and non-available place to everyone and then at the same time stating in the data management plan that we also aim to uh, include uh, in an open uh, open access repository of data, for example, like the one that we will have in Avaro University, that that data will be kept there and is available for, for everyone. Or this is a conflict. What is your opinion? Because I'm asking this because I have this problem right now. Can I do both? Is it recommended to do both? Did you understand my question? Yes, I do understand. I have to admit, I'm not an expert on, on data management. I guess um, as this is very um, an aspect related to scientific research. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if Professor Coutinho I mean, has a comment. I'll say very quickly. <clears throat> These questions related with data management will be very difficult. Uh, we will have to have a debt uh, management officer, just like uh, we have concerning the, the information about people. Like right now, we have in state the manager for information that we want to share, or yeah, we will have the same thing. 
But what you are asking, it's possible, meaning that it's possible to protect your data for a period of time. Uh, you don't need to release it immediately. What you have the obligation is that eventually this data that has been publicly founded will become publicly available, but uh, not necessarily the moment you measure it. There are periods of time that you can consider that are compatible with the patenting and uh, all these things. But there will be certainly uh, legal problems and conflicting uh, things. And that's why eventually you will have to have someone to decide on these things, the responsible or the institution that will contact people in, at all the levels. Okay. It's going to be messy. No okay, so we, we can just say for now that we will work together with the new data management plan that we have in place in our university. Uh, I don't remember the name anymore now. I should. Uh, and okay. Uh, and in the future for EU projects, we will contact Veronica company to help oh, us okay. with the dissemination plan. Well, Thank you. So <clears throat> Other people? Other questions, other curiosities? This is not the case. And being already 10 past noon here, 10 past one there in Italy, in Milan. <laughs> we will uh, thank Veronica again for this uh, very interesting presentation, for being here today with us and sharing all this information. And. Uh, just a short, uh, let's say, um, announcement. If you subscribe to the Greater Newsletter, we will send you the slides with all the links. <laughs> all right. So here's the prize Thank to you. you. You subscribe to the newsletter and you get this extra information. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Ron, you very much, and Joao and Maria. Thank you. Daniela for being here today. Thanks all for participating. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye. Bye.